When it comes to weird stuff in the sky, a lot of it can be explained away by modern standards. But what about when the explanation doesn't make sense or when science is stranger than fiction? Today we have a red halo, UFOs, and raining meat ready to be dissected. Question for you, what's the weirdest thing you've ever seen in the sky? Let me know in the comments and let's get into things. Back at the end of March of this year, San Antonians found themselves transfixed, awed, and a little bit mystified after spotting a strange bright light in the sky that just didn't make any rational national sense. Folks reported seeing the object from Seguin and the Alamo City to New Braunfels and shared video of what appeared to be a bright light moving slowly before suddenly picking up speed and creating a ring in the sky. Now, when you're watching the video, a couple seconds later, it fades from view. Was it an asteroid, a comet, or something else? Some folks looking for a rational explanation immediately assumed it must be from SpaceX launching its Falcon 9 satellite. And hey, it's far from the first time that mysterious sights have been spotted over the state. There's a video from last June out of North Texas that shows a fuzzy light in the sky. It was moving from the west to the east and appeared to be in the clouds, although there were no clouds around. And as it got closer, it blew a cloud of smoke and then it turned into a ring. Now, some folks think that it's likely that the fuzzy nature of the light was actually all 22 of the Starlink satellites bunched together, but it hasn't been proven one way or the other. Previous videos have shown bright or otherwise weird objects in the skies, and sometimes during the day. In some cases, the prevailing theory is that they were Mylar balloons. In other cases, SpaceX. But since nobody has a definitive answer, I'm going with still unexplained. Now, if I'm talking about incidents we don't have the video of, there's one from Athens, Texas that will always live on rent-free in my brain. So a retired military fighter and commercial pilot who was also a former astronaut, he once submitted this account of what happened one night to an online message board. I think it was July 5th in 2013 around 10, 15 PM. And this message board, by the way, was the National UFO Reporting Center. Just a silly little thing. So he reported that he and his family were sitting outside, and when he looked up into the sky, he observed a fairly large orange glowing orb moving rapidly overhead at around 90 degrees of elevation. A minute or two later, his whole family spotted a group of three similar objects along the same flight path as the first one. The objects allegedly gave off no sound and seemed to glow from atmospheric heating. He and his family attempted to record the object using their iPhones, but the grainy dark video was of no evidential use. A direct quote from him reads, they moved much faster than orbital satellites. So like the International Space Station or airplanes, but much slower than meteors and did not change brightness as a meteor would upon entering the atmosphere. So if a former pilot and astronaut has no explanation for what he witnessed, what the heck was it? Also, what makes Texas a UFO hotspot? Let me know what you think in the comments. An enormous circular halo of eerie red light, which looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, recently flashed in the night sky above Italy. The bizarre disk appeared and disappeared within milliseconds, meaning most folks likely missed the strange spectacle. But one person, a nature photographer by the name of Walter Bunato, managed to capture a little image of the luminous halo in the sky above the town of Posagno in northern Italy on March 27th of this year. However, the red ring was not actually located above the town. Instead, the massive circle, which was around 224 miles in diameter, blinked above central Italy and part of the Adriatic Sea. It was only a forced perspective that made the ring look as if it were hanging above the town. So what was it? Well, there's a couple of theories. Obviously, UFOs are on the table, since we don't know for sure, and while around here, the powers that be assume UFO first and science later. But yes, we've gotta say what people are thinking it could be. According to spaceweather.com, it could be an emission of light and very low frequency perturbations due to electromagnetic pulse sources, or L for short. Now, elves are a rare type of stratospheric and mesospheric perturbations resulting from intense thunderstorm electrification, known as Sprite. The red rings are created when electromagnetic pulses, or EMPs, given off by lightning hit Earth's ionosphere, the ionized part of the upper atmosphere that stretches between 50 to 400 miles above the ground. Now, due to their short-lived nature, elves are normally visible only to satellites orbiting Earth and were discovered just in 1990 thanks to cameras on board at NASA's space shuttles. Bonato's new image is likely the best picture of one ever from the ground, according to spaceweather.com. The photographer believes that the L was produced by an EMP generated from a large thunderstorm near Ancona, a city around 174 miles southeast of Pasagno. 
Now, normally lightning bolts do not emit EMPs because they do not carry enough current. But apparently during this storm, an unusually powerful bolt, at least 10 times more powerful than regular lightning bolts, likely generated the electrical shockwave, which then hit the ionosphere, according to, once again, spaceweather.com. When electrons from within the EMP hit the ionosphere, the charged particles excite nitrogen atoms, which then give off the reddish glow. Still a UFO, because even though it matches up somewhat to elves, it doesn't quite do so perfectly, fitting in with a popular theory that UFOs can indeed camouflage into Earth byproducts. Look, this one was just having an off day. Something odd happened back in 1950 when astronomers noticed that nine star-like point sources of light had simultaneously appeared in a photographic plate acquired at the Palomar Observatory in Southern California as part of the famous Palomar Sky Survey. That might or might not sound unusual, but hey, none of those point sources were seen in images taken just before of the same patch of sky, and likewise, they didn't appear in images taken after either. That remains true through today, even with images from current surveys that are much more sensitive to faint objects. So what were these nine weird transients? Well, that's the question addressed by Beatriz Villarroel at the Nordic Institute for Theoretical Physics in Stockholm, Sweden, and colleagues in a new paper. Beatrice conducts a citizen science project called VASCO, which is short for the Vanishing and Appearing Sources During a Century of Observations. The project searches for exotic or rare transients, and it has probed a time baseline of about 70 years, using data from the United States and Naval Observatory catalog. So far, citizen scientists and professional astronomers working via VASCO have found about 100 transient objects, mostly on Palomar's Sky Survey red plates. Beatrice and her team point out that astronomers have seen stars, and even an exoplanet that seemed to vanish before this. Like for example, there are variable stars whose brightness waxes and wanes. There are supernova, asteroids, and variable active galactic nuclei. All of these can change their brightness on time scales ranging from minutes to years. But the nine point sources of light found in a red sensitive Sky Survey plate back in 1950 yeah, those are different. All nine sources were absent in all of the images taken before or after. Astronomers didn't find the objects in a blue-sensitive photographic plate from 30 minutes earlier. They didn't see them on a red-sensitive plate taken six days later. Whatever they were, the weird transients were unusual in being so numerous and so fleeting in nature. Now you see them, now you never see them again, which is very odd. Now the red plate from the survey reached down to a magnitude of about plus 20 vastly fainter than the human eye can see. The nine objects haven't shown up in more modern photographic surveys either, which are more sensitive to faint objects. Now, if you've been thinking the transient might be akin to a lens flare on a modern photograph, you're not alone. Back, way back when, back in 1950, the glass cover used during scanning could produce false stars in the image. But according to New Paper, the objects in the photographic plate don't have the shape expected from such ghost images. As of now, it seems that out of the possibilities mentioned, satellites could be the closest match. But this happened a full seven years before the launch of the first satellite. So what do we think? UFO. Next up, a tale out of Alaska, which tends to be home to a lot of weird stuff. In February of last year, an unidentified object was brought down about 10 miles off of the frozen coast of Alaska, and this was announced by US officials, and details about it are still pretty quiet. U.S. military pilots sent up to examine the object gave conflicting accounts of what they saw, which is part of the reason why the Pentagon was cautious in describing what the object actually is, according to a source briefed on the intelligence. Now, this incident marked the second time that the U.S. jets had taken down an object in less than a week, following the bringing down of a suspected Chinese spy balloon off the coast of South Carolina the week before. The North American Aerospace Defense Command said it was monitoring high-altitude airborne objects over northern Canada, and military aircraft were operating in the area from Alaska and Canada. Once again, this is according to a news release from the agency. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced shortly after that he ordered the downing of the object, but it's not clear what it is, or whether it has any relation to the spy balloon. Now, Trudeau said he spoke with President Joe Biden and that Canadian forces would lead the object recovery operation, but they were tight-lipped after the fact. F-35 fighter jets were set up to investigate after the object was first detected and brought back limited, and by that I mean none, in terms of info about the object. Some pilots said the object interfered with the sensors on their planes, which checks for UFO tech. Other pilots also claimed to have seen no identifiable propulsion on the object and could not explain how it was staying in the air, despite cruising at an altitude of 40,000 feet. Searches for the unidentified objects were concluded with no sense of debris from either, which, and this is according to multiple government statements, which means either they didn't find anything or for sure they found alien tech and they're keeping their mouth shut. Now, Canada tends to be more coy about alien sightings compared to the US, 
but members of the Mutual UFO Network have made claims about alien bases found underwater off of the coast of Alaska. And this is based on eyewitness reports from like decades ago. Just saying. On a nice sunny spring day in 1876, a strange thing happened at Alan Crouch's home in Olympia Springs, Kentucky. His wife was outside making soap when chunks of raw meat, some of them more than three inches in diameter, started falling out of the sky all around her. And as newspapers reported, two men, whose identities are unknown, tasted the meat and thought that it was either venison or mutton. This grisly mystery went unsolved for quite a long time since researchers debated the cause of the meat shower. Now, there was one logical conclusion from a Dr. L. D. Kostenbein. He thought it was vulture upchuck, because vultures are known to, you know, do that as a way to defend themselves or to make their bodies lighter so they can fly easily. But at the end of the day, nobody was able to prove that for sure. Nobody found a vulture. So once again, UFO. And that's it for me once again, folks. I've been Alexa, your resident ooky spooky girly. See y'all next time, you lovely spooky people.